no internet. What is happening? We got the uh, G3 valve back in the shop and you can probably tell by the title what we're going to do today. And big surprise, we're going to throw a coyote in it. So here is the engine and some other pieces that we're going to be using here. I actually got a whole drivetrain, so this is going to actually make things really easy. And uh, I'm a big advocate, if you can find a dropout like this where it includes the harnesses, all your front accessories. We don't, we don't need the AC compressor, but literally the only thing I had to buy was the upper hose, transmission bracket, pedal, ECU actually came with it, and uh, I got a stock cold air because I'm just getting this thing in here to even further prove to you how our harness plug and play works. I got another one brewing over here. Uh, for a, a little older car, no five, but this car is no eight, and so it's just going to bolt right in, and we're going to party. We're actually going to do this in a couple of days. So most of this journey is going to be under time lapse because we we know how to drop a drivetrain, lift it up, pull it out, drop it down, put this on the subframe, put it back in. It already has a trans harness which has the battery, and all the hookups, everything is in really good shape. The uh, downshift auto parts here in Phoenix had this for sale. They usually deal with Miata parts, but took this out in uh, you know, a very gentle manner. And I had a few extra parts, like a fuel line. And I'm gonna do the, I'll explain the fuel um, stuff a little later. Um, but yeah, got stock exhaust, manifolds, and I uh, just gotta remember that the thing is dry, so I just gotta remember to put fluids in it. Uh, I just wanna get this thing to the point before I leave for SEMA Fest this week that um, you know, the harness is what it is. It follows our guide, which has provided over 20 people and their guidance and success into swapping one of these into the S107 and having everything work. So I'm going to start jamming on this thing. And I think it's going to be a really cool car. Now we've got the angle kit on it, some wheels, lowered. And I was going to have a coyote in it. Stock tuned and stuff for now. I'll, uh, I'll upgrade some stuff later on it, and uh, yeah, let's party. valve deleted yeah so I uh, learned a lot from my 07 and left a lot of more things on like the exhaust cross member and just uh, taking out some S50 engines also learned uh, you know what you can kind of keep um, which kind of apply to this and note the uh, AC compressor is still intact. We still got a charge in this gal. 
See if I can swing it around here, maybe you'll see. Ooh, there it is. That's your high pressure valve. We'll replace that with the one that's on the line that came on my engine that I didn't have to spend 60 bucks on. Uh, I was so close to like dropping this thing in with an hour faster than I thought. And then I remembered right up there, you got uh, some uh, heater core lines. So I had to pull the intake manifold off real quick and do all that, left the engine harness on, trans harnesses on. Um, on my 07, I already had the power steering deleted. So that took a little more time, which made me pull the front bumper to get to the bolts to pull the power steering cooler off. And a nice hot tip, um, cause I hate spills cause it makes everything nasty. It might take me a little more time to do stuff, but I just keep all my vacuum plugs with, from random stuff. Um, didn't have one quite to fit there, but you know, I have one in the radiator you saw in the heater cores. I uh, can't see it from there, but you know, just to keep things neat, whatever. It's how I like to do shit. So, um, yeah, I think doing the exhaust or leaving that on was definitely a time saver. Uh, getting that clutch line off is, I don't know how you guys do that. Uh, I mean, when I do clutches on S197s or any Mustangs with this type of transmission, I uh, have to, you know, completely unbolt the cross member of the transmission hang, but just be aware of what might crunch. And then I can get the clutch line off. In this case, I dropped it off down like a uh, eight inches or so, and then I was able to access the line. I wasn't gonna do it near the master, but good luck with that with the accumulator AC stuff in there. So now it's time to just plop this drivetrain in there. Easy, right? Bolt right in. Let's go. All right, internet, day two. We're cruising along, look at drive chain deleted. Uh, now it's time to take that, plug that out of my subframe and put the coyote in it. And then should be able to get this uh, back in the car in uh, probably a couple few hours. So we are about four hours into this swap. So I'm really like hoping for like the fastest to be swapped Coyote project ever and to be running, not just like in the car, but actually from start to finish, even with filming all this stuff, 12 hours. So let's get after it. Dude, I struggle with getting this thing on here. It's uh, usually goes a little better than that. Next time I think I'm just gonna take up off all the control arms and the brakes. They just got in the way and I don't know. Let me do a breakdown of what I need to take off of this and what I'm gonna save. All right, so now that's kind of more in the open. We can go over a little more and show you what this thing's all about. I'm gonna have to take off the AC compressor I'm going to end up having to get an F-150 tensioner and I believe an idler. They're already threaded for that. I wonder if I can seal one from the three valve, at least an idler anyway, not the tensioner, uh, because we're reusing the AC compressor from the 4.6. Uh, I might as notice I took out the, the rack because a lot of the lines were just in the way and getting me frustrated. Um, so along with the AC compressor being not needed for with for from this engine, the lines, like I said, Downshift Auto Parts did a good job of taking this engine out. So don't need that line. That line's already hooked up in the car. Going to need the heater hoses. What else am I going to need? Um, yeah, that's that's about it. As far as accessories go, I am probably gonna just gonna take the engine harness off. I'm not sure. I mean, it seems pretty tucked in there. And now that I know I don't need to take the intake manifold off, especially on these, I can probably, installing these with the intake manifold on, it's gonna be a lot easier than taking them off. And uh, the clutch line, I don't have the other end for that on the car. And I left the, I disconnected it at the transmission on the car. So I'm just gonna save this for a rainy day. Disconnect it from there. 
and yeah that's about it so i'm going to just take that ac off um also this is the uh high pressure ac switch that uh, we need to take off and put it on the 4.6. I showed that in another video, but I'll show it again here. So that's just a Schrader valve underneath it. So even on the car, it has a Schrader valve. So I'm just going to unscrew it there. Unscrew the 4.6 one. Let's charge it hold here a little, and then uh, screw the Coyote one back on. And then with the, the plug and play harness, it plugs in and then the math plugs in so uh, let's go over some of the extra parts you need to need to cross member because it was toasted math upper hose the pedal and this is the fuel line now i want to talk a little bit about that now that it's out of the car so this is the fuel line that goes from the fuel line underneath the master cylinder to the fuel rail that's a coyote one of uh, 13 or 14. You notice it's different on the three valves, so I'm going to have to take the liner off because the connection is somewhere in here. It's next to impossible to get it. Might be able to see it. Maybe if I actually crawled in there and looked at it, but can't really see where it is. Nope. So, just going to have to transfer that. I'm going to do that before put stabbing the engine back in. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that AC compressor, and yeah, looks a little grungy, but this is a, uh, a quick job. I want to show you all how easy this uh, engine swap harness really is. So you can do this uh, swap in 12 labor hours or so. So yeah, let's go. And that's just running. I'm going to have to button up a lot of other things like exhaust, but we're talking turnkey. Let's get the engine running, make sure everything's good kind of thing. So. Let's get back after it. All right, got the car you just about ready to roll in here, but I almost forgot my fuel line stuff. So let me show you how, I didn't even take the inner fender liner out. Just like, I think it's right here. And that's, that's the line. Or I did the quick disconnect, use some tools like that. And pull it out of there. I have absolutely no idea how you do this with an engine in the car. I'm just glad I remember to do it now. So three valve fuel line out. Coyote fuel line in. It's really gonna be this simple folks. Now, once I, I don't have a, this is taken off, oops, sorry. This is taken off a car that had the fuel system upgraded. So I was having a hard time finding the fuel or the part number for it. Actually, it might be on that little tag. I should probably take a picture of that before I put it out. So that's the Diddy Pop. That's going to be the easiest fuel system you can do. Because the way we're going to, the harness utilizes the fuel pump driver module. So you don't have to run a return system and upgrade your pump. Because I'm pretty sure the three valve pump is like bare minimum. We're just going to use it for now to get the thing going. I have a spare Deech Works. So yeah, let's see if we can pull that back out and look at the part number. So. Looks like it's a BR339J280BB. Hopefully that help, that'll help me and help you guys. While I'm in here, I'm going to put the ACE high AC switch in. So hopefully the Schrader valve isn't stuck or anything below this valve or this high pressure dual pressure switch. You probably hear a little action. Break it loose. Yeah, I know I didn't have the wrench. I've been in a hurry, guys. Just go, and then that's it. Ooh. Put this back on. Now, does it get any easier than that? I submit that it cannot. This is the only advantage starting with a V6 has. Is that, so for some reason the four liters have the same switch to Coyote, so. You got one up on us. So yeah, let's shove this thing in here.
we're so close. Uh, nothing's wrong. It's Halloween. Got to go, uh, you know, do the trick or treat thing. And then uh, we'll be back. So I'm sure you're going to see the time lapse to like, just go night. We, we're not adding extra hours. I'm just taking a little break. So we're all on course to do this for 12 hours. So here we go. And we're back at it. Let's finish getting that body down and bolt it in. And then it'll probably be tomorrow because it's been uh, one heck of a day. Because once that's in there, basically the really hard part is over because buttoning everything up is just like a walk in the park because everything just kind of goes where it should. It's just the, the easiest swap ever. So let's stop wasting and talking about it. Let's just go do it. Cat in the hat. You home for this coyote? No, if I was super taking my time like I did with my 07, this thing would be much cleaner, but what a time crunch. But it's in. As you can see, everything just bolts in. That's the 11 14 cross member, MT82, clutch line is hooked up. Somewhere in there. And. Yeah, no. I mean, come on. What's there left to do? Just uh, put the radiator back in and uh, put the bracket for the AC. But I'm going to get this thing to a point where I can just turn the key and prove that it can run. All right, while I'm in here, kind of just making some things look pretty, the loom kind of took a hit, just rewrapping some, some little stuff here and there. Remember, Cowdy cars. Battery is flipped versus three valve cars. Not sure why they did that, but that's how it goes. So, um, yeah, so the engine and trans harness on the three valves also includes the battery cable. So, those are with the three valve. They came out with it. And the trans harness on the Coyotes is also has the battery cables. So it's just as simple as hooking these bad boys up and all your holes for like the clips and the ground circuits are there. So I'm gonna hook up everything but the main ground strap because I don't want anything firing off here. I'll hook up the, the main power, the fuse box and shoot, put the computer in. I hooked up the heater hoses while it was accessible you could still probably get to those and push them on the hardest part is going to be getting to that low ac switch uh be able to hook it up uh, with the harness the swap harness there's the i hit, preemptively took that out hook up the vacuum line you can see it sitting there hook up the fuel line that we did earlier you notice i left the rack out i'm gonna have an electric rack on the way suit here soon um i mean i'm gonna reuse the radiator uh, i recommend getting the overflow tank from a coyote I believe I have one in the shed, and whew, I think the, besides the the AC bracket, you know, this thing is about ready to run already. I'm like, I feel like it's happening too fast. So I'm gonna stop jibber jabbing and get some of these little things hooked up. Got some 
Things squared away, got the power by the hour bracket, and for whatever reason, I can remember if the, the bolts they provided to go from the, to secure the compressor to their bracket was shorter or long, they were way short, they never reached the bracket. Not sure why it hasn't changed in like three years. I You end up having to shorten the stock bolts, whether the Coyote or the 4.6 are the same length. So I chop out about a half inch off the stock AC compressor bolts, bolts right in. Um, first time using the MT82 harness, trans harness. I had to cut, peel back the harness so that the connector could clip in. It's the same connector on the 4.6 as the Coyote. Another big thing here. Now, my experience has been using the GT500 harness, which provides within the trans harness a, you see the cable going from the positive battery to the fuse box. Well, the MT82 trans harness does not have that. The Coyote cars, 11 to 14 Coyote cars, that nut was loose on the battery cable. So I'm guessing they didn't give me that little cable. I had to borrow it from the 4.6 harness. It's uh, way longer because the battery is 180, put a little terminal on it, and there's a little stud there for it. Perfect, still looks like factory, doesn't it? So I'm just chugging along here, trying to, I mean, I look at it and to make this thing run minimal, I just got to put in trans and oil fluid. And uh, it's late now, but I think we're just gonna pop the radiator in and hook all that stuff up. So I need a tensioner and idler for the AC. And yeah, I guess I got a track pack car engine. So that's kind of neat, it's got an oil cooler. And then uh, could start maybe plugging the uh, swap harness into where it needs to. And I'll show you how I do that. I already put in the Coyote computer. So the trans harness connector is plugged in. The engine harness is plugged back in. All uh, the Christmas trees are broken. Otherwise the engine in line would be clipped into there and there and got a Hook that up to the ground. I'll usually put that on the timing chain cover. And yeah, so now I can put the cooler back in, hook up the upper radiator hose. Of course, I had one in my freaking shed when I went to look for my overflow tank, but I got a new one sitting over there and put in the pedal. And that should be about it. <laughs> see got a lot of this buttoned up didn't have a cap for that that'll make do just gotta install the math sensor which we have and the evap hose from the 46 doesn't quite fit or reach there and leaving the connectors out for the swap harness to show you how we interface to that Tank in, hoses all in. Uh, I think I'm gonna throw the bumper on next. And then uh, maybe the sway bar and all that good stuff. So yeah, super simple. All right, that concludes night two. I'm getting this uh, coyote swapped in this uh, cheap three valve. So basically I put the bumper on, uh, just kind of cleaned up some other stuff. So I'm still missing a steering rack and drive shaft, like I mentioned, but I am just some fluids, a pedal install way, and installing the plug and play harness from firing this thing up in two days. Now, what is it? It's like almost midnight now. So I've got, uh, I'm pushing 12 hours right now. So still not too bad. So let's get into tomorrow. And it's tomorrow night. All right, you can tell because my shirt color has changed. Car's still where we left it last night. And 
I am no MT-82 aficionado, I've never had to change it, but apparently they don't take ATF like the Tremex, so had to go source some today from the Ford dealer, it's not cheap, because um, I wasn't able to get like any of that AMS oil or BG or whatever the hell I've seen that other people recommend, and I was not about to make a post, because I've seen there's always posts about that, and I just never looked. Um, gonna throw some oil in it, get the transmission fluid in, throw some coolant in it, and I'm going to do the plug and play harness in real time. It's not going to be in time lapse. I'm going to show you exactly how long it's going to take. Minus, um, I decided to leave the pedal out because the, the pedal harness is break out from the computer. So I'm going to have the pedal in the engine bay so you can actually rev it in the engine bay. So, so uh, yeah, I'm going to get these filled up and uh, then we can party with the harness. Besides, which is very common, the uh, O-ring for the freaking Y-pipe there. I think when, I've had this happen on a couple engines where they sit out, they dry up because they weren't running. Now I got a little bit of a leak. It drips just the same. So, but we got oil in it. Transmission is full. And, uh... I'm gonna break down before I bust out the harness here on where everything goes. So here is where the 4.6 computer originally hooked up to from the body and it's in line. And so my harness will plug into that and then plug into the open slot on the Coyote computer. It'll also interface into the trans harness. The engine in line, it's down here. And the 4.6 inline is just basically getting the uh, oil pressure signal from that very same engine inline connector to here to, you know, make it so you don't have an open big connector. It's literally one wire. And then whew, the pedal will just going to let that hang. The math will come from the harness and hook up to, I guess you guessed it the MAF, and then down there to the, the high AC. And uh, since I'm actually testing this for a customer before I send it out, uh, the low AC plugs, you can see the AC line right there. You can see right there, the low AC. So it's gotta go down there. It's gonna be easy to plug in. I don't, I don't even have the AC built on, so um, I know it works, uh, but that's what, that's the gist of it. So those few connectors. So I'm gonna do it on the GoPro so I can do this with both hands and hook this all up and unbox the harness and then party. All right. Oh, I forgot that uh, one other thing as well. The fuse box connector is right by the transit because it hooks up. You want to unsnap that. Hook it up where the old engine harness went from the 4.6. So I'm going to hook up the first things first the adapter. That's the interface to that. Actually, I'm gonna hook up the computer interface first and foremost. Boom. 
might suggest doing this with the covers out. Maybe I'll take, take off the transmission harness. That's all right. Just all the way. So I was going to do it in real time. It's usually how it opens up anyway. Go from the, start from the bottom and go up. Engine harness from Cody. Looks like you gotta get it like half, half cocked. Just the fuse backs rattling. Oh, it helps when you have it the right freaking way. That's why they're keyed. Probably shine a little more light on here, Matt. This thing not all the way back because it's you know, like protect mode. There it is. What a boy. <laughs> okay. So the adapter is in. Let's get the Seven mil here.
course, that transmission connector is right. We don't want to be. Well, we could have rounded that a little better. Still can take the transmission harness. This is my car. This thing needs to get into the little slot so your fuse box can close back up. Like that. These engine harness. This your transmission interface. hooked up. Um, like I said, we're not going to worry about the high or the low AC or even the high AC at this point, so I'm just going to kind of separate those. Let those hang out over here. This is the low, so I probably route it around and back. part of the, <clears throat> the math portion of the harness. I usually route this under here quickly, but like I said, this is actually going to be a, a little bit of a temporary setup. And then the pedal. I was told this is probably way longer than we need, but this, is ha this has to reach all the way to, you know, the foot well. But so we're just going to hook it up to here. Get the pedal right here. So that was done in real time, and that's literally the more. I mean, besides having the pedal in there, you just have to route that in the grommet that's there, and that's it. That's we literally made one splice to convert this to Coyote interface, and that was to get the power cable to the fuse box. Now it's time to fire this thing up. Okay, with everything hooked up, turn the key on. You're going to hear the HVAC motors going nuts. Hear that fuel pump, maybe. You might may have heard it. But you can hear the throttle body doing its thing. So let's fire it up. So here we are. Tip to start.
click it into gear. We'll just do fourth. Because I can't I don't have any throttle up here, so let the clutch out. Oh look at that, speedometer's working. Fifth gear. A little more speed. Sixth. Yeah, so this car has 331s. I'm sure the track pack computer has 373s in it, so it's probably off, but just another perk here. Cat in the hat, that was that. And uh, that's how you swap one of these early S197 cars the easiest way and the fastest way. I can guarantee you, I've never seen anyone swap a car this fast and have it running and have to splice zero wires except at that battery cable. You tell me, I'm pretty sure it's the only way and we have the only product that allows you to do that and make it modular. So, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, do all the YouTube stuff, click, subscribe, the bell, the whistles. I gotta button this thing up and go to SEMA Fest today. So uh, we'll see you next time.